Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today, we're going to cover the second in the four video series on Go Kits. Uh, this was an interesting video for me to shoot uh, because this one is actually going to be power. What makes that interesting? Well, I did the entire shot outside. Um, and uh, there are some audio issues here and there, not terrible. I think you'll be okay with them. Uh, covered a lot of information too, because there is a lot of information regarding powering your equipment out in the field. Um, some of the things I want you to remember here also is that we have four basic uh, uh, constraints, right? Weight, use, budget, and of course, transportation, right? So um, all of the things you're going to say, see in this video, I took into consideration weight, uh, how difficult it would be to use, and what the budget was. Uh, and transportation, of course, you know, that is what it is. You got to figure out how to get it there if you need it. Um, one other thing I'll touch on before I go to the uh, video proper here, is uh, I'm showing lead-soaked batteries, okay? So these are old traditional deep cycle batteries. These are not AGMs, nor are they um, uh, iron phosphate batteries, which would be really cool. But yeah, that doggone number three, right? Gets me every single time. Uh, I gotta be able to buy the equipment. And uh, the solar, basically the solar is set up for a uh, deep cycle lead soaked battery. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, move into the video. Oh, but if you're thinking of it, do me a favor and click on subscribe down below. It really helps me out. And give me a thumbs up if you like the video, okay? Anyway, without any further ado, on with the show. Well, all right, here we are out in the elements, and eh, not really the elements. We've got uh, about 85 degree weather here in Southern California today, uh, and I'm actually uh, in my shop parking lot right now shooting this on Sunday. Um, I wanted to cover, of course, the uh, second of the four videos here, uh, talking about electrical or electricity. How do we power everything? And Boy, is this a loaded subject. But uh, I also promised I'd give you a little bit better tour of the Go Kit. So let's move around to the back of the Go Kit and take a look at that. Well, all right, I am off tripod here. And uh, this is the back of the two Go Kits that we talked about earlier. Uh, let's take a look at, of course, the top one here. And this is our go kit for light field operation, but multiple radios. Um, if you look in the back right here, you'll notice uh, that we have all of our uh, connections for antennas as well as a SDR outfeed. Um, this actually has a switch built in it, but no SDR and uh, our output for our audio so we can tap in. This has two speakers in it, one on each side. Let me get a shot of those. As well as that switch I was talking about right, uh, right there. And then of course back in here I've got a fuse box and, and the radios and the tuner and all that stuff for that. On this side we actually have a uh, USB connect connection to go to the signal link and a plug-in connection to go to the CAT controls on the uh, VHF HF radio and of course our power in. So the idea behind this, this was a rework of this Go Kit. I was experimenting with trying to get all of the connections to the outside of the Go Kit and not have to reach in or have a bunch of loose cables hanging there and uh, this solution worked out pretty well. I did learn a few things from the first go kit though. When we go down to the second go kit here, uh, you got to kind of look a little bit, but you'll notice that I put the fuses and everything 
in a much more accessible place rather than buried behind a bunch of switches. Um, my power in and out, of course, uh, I now have an in and an out that's fused. And of course VHF, UHF, and HF 6 meter are the two antenna connections. And that's all I really needed because I have the SDR and everything built into this. So how do I access that? Let's move around to the front. So here on the front of uh, this go kit, I've got a in that goes to a USB powered hub and two outs coming off the USB powered hub. This also has a audio switching system that allows us to have multiple headphones set up to this, which is very, very handy uh, if you're in an environment where you're trying to do a contest or whatever on this one. And of course, you know, the one up here we had talked about uh, earlier, this has two radios in it, the VHF, UHF over here, uh, the HF, VHF, UHF over here, and of course a signal link that goes to the VHF, UHF, uh, HF over here. We can use that for packet and all sorts of stuff, which works out really well. Anyway, alright, so without any further ado, let me show you how to get power to these things. Well, okay, so how do we get power when we're going out in the field? It's nice if we have a general idea of what actually is going to be going on where we're going. Uh, one thing I would like to know uh, from whoever is hosting this, if anyone is, is am I going to have a chance to plug into commercial power? And we're not talking about plugging into a USB power port or anything like that. We're talking about some serious power. Uh, and how far away am I going to be from that power? And that really is the key that we work with here. Um, and there'll be some decisions that you'll need to make based on that answer from them. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about my decisions as we go a little further. But commercial power, if you are able to access it and it's within the way that you want to operate, is always your best bet. Now let's talk about the way I pack for external commercial power. All right, well, these are the two boxes that I take with me regardless of how I'm going to be powering my radios. I don't care what method I use. The stuff in here is always stuff that I manage to need. Um, this box over here, this is pretty much a static box. A lot of times this box won't change. This is stuff that I always want with me, and it always goes back in this box. One of those things... This is a solar controller, actually, but I don't use it for that. I have a Honda generator, so I can plug this into my Honda generator, hook this up to a battery, and safely charge that battery with the power generator. This right here, this is an adapter for my Lenovo laptop. This takes a 12-volt input, comes out at 19.2 volts. Uh, actually made this. Uh, didn't make this portion. This is actually something I bought on Amazon. Works great. Also in here we've got tools. Um, I've got ends and Andersons, uh, different radio connections and wires. Wire itself to put ends on. If I need to make a cable for whatever reason I'm missing one, I have the wires for that. So these are all things that I want with me all the time. Your needs may be different, but I recommend that you take a look at building something, a kit or something that contains all the stuff that you want to make sure that you don't get caught without. Okay, that's my little electrical don't get caught without it box. Over here, it's another electrical box. Okay, and you notice these are the same uh, little uh, tool tackle boxes. And uh, I found that uh, centering on a couple different designs for these, uh, some bigger than others, but trying to stay within the same box makes it easier to stack them. So if you're loading them or whatever, they just load better. Anyway, with that, let's take a little glance at this one. Now, this one isn't so static. This one might have stuff dependent on a particular thing I'm doing. One thing that's in here for sure, though, fuses. 
Another thing is Anderson to Anderson jump cables, right? Because I got to get from one device to another. What better way? Uh, what else do we have in here? Oh, okay, so uh, radio connectors, right? For the different radios that I have, the different plugs on the back. What are these good for? Well, I'll tell you what, if you have a Molex connector that goes bad and you need to figure out a way to replace it, well, you can't do it if you don't have the Molex connector. Again, load for bear, pray for squirrel. Anyway, uh, also, I like to carry an extra fuse block adapter. I use these a lot uh, in my equipment setups, and um, I've had them fail. Uh, not necessarily, uh, you know, the uh, higher price ones, but there's some inexpensive ones, and every once in a while I'll, I'll fall to the... Oh, uh, uh, mindset of gee I use this four times a year do I really need to spend that much money and yeah so what you end up doing is you end up buying two of the ones that cost you two-thirds of the one good one that makes sense anyway with that let me get this all back in my box here so these two boxes are always with me now Let's turn around and let's talk about what I bring when I've got commercial power. Also, I have to bring this particular kit whenever I'm running off generator, and you'll see why. All right, <clears throat> this is my AC power supply box. Now, in here, I have a power strip. I do have a extension cord. This is, I believe, about a 25 foot um, 14 gauge extension cord. I have two, count them, two switching power supplies with Andersons connected. Why do I have two of them? Well, I'll tell you why. I've got an HF, I've got two HF radios over here. If I bring out both go kits, I have two HF radios and I also have a VHF radio over there. Now, if that's the case, I probably want to power each of these go kits off their own 32 amp power supply. Now, some guys may say that's overkill. We'll talk a little bit about power loss and what it does to your radio. Uh, a lot of times, if you're working a public event or whatever, you're going to be using all three radios. I mean, um, my go kits, obviously, the uh, HF uh, contest go kit, that's an all band. I can use that for VHF, UHF as well. So I could use that as one frequency for uh, a repeater. And then I've got the other two radios, an HF, VHF, UHF radio and a VHF UHF radio in there, I could actually handle three different frequencies on two different bands. Well, you know, and the truth is, I could actually handle three different frequencies on uh, uh, four different bands if I really needed to. Anyway, but that's a conversation for another video. Anyway, this is basically my AC power setup. Oh, you know what, though? Some questions I've got to ask, right? How close am I going to be to that power outlet? I got 25 feet of cable. What if that's too short? Well, that just means you got to bring more extension cords. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're going anywhere over about 20, 25 feet, you want to go to a higher rated extension cord. Now, ironically, if you're plugging into commercial power, you grab your big extension cord, you get these set out with your power strip, you get everything plugged in, and you're ready to rock and roll. Now, what happens if you're not going to have commercial power? Well, guess what? I would bring this go kit as well to power by generator. A few different subjects with that, and uh, we'll move on to that next. Well, all right. There's my little Honda. I love this little Honda. Now, this little darling right here, let me sweep around to this side so you can see the power outlet. 
this little darling right here that is a Honda EU 2200i this is probably not only the most audio quiet generator out there but it's also one of the radio RF quietest generators I've ever used I understand there are some other lower cost generators that may be able to do as well but for my money this has always been a success and bulletproof generator let me show you how hard it is to start it now how about that one problem though even though it's quiet it's still a motor so what are we going to do about that well I hate to say it but if I'm running a generator I need it to be a little ways away from me so let's go ahead and get it moved and then go over and we'll show you what we're doing over by the radio okay well all right so here we are I've got the generator parked over there on the right sitting behind my uh, little car there and uh, let's go ahead and do a walk up and observation on this now the generator currently is oh I don't know we're gonna call it uh, about 28 feet away from my radio I'm running a uh, 12 gauge 50 foot extension cord into the power uh, strip plugging that into the 12 volt power supply plugging that into the input into the bottom go kit we'll come over to this side and kind of take a glance at what's going on here and uh, let's see if I can zoom in I always hate when they do that but if you can see I've got about 13.7 happening on the uh, voltage coming in which means I got about a 0.1 or a uh, ten per, uh, excuse me a tenth of a volt loss between that system and the power supply I will call that normal the reason I call it normal is there is always loss being introduced with electrical power I've got a video on that that you might enjoy anyway that was simple and this actually would be the same setup that you would use uh, you know if you were uh, this would be the same setup that you would use if you were actually using a uh, uh, regular old commercial power plug the only difference is you wouldn't have the noise and let's talk about that a little bit Woo, excuse me if I'm breathing hard, but I just uh, moved the generator, the big and long extension cord, uh, and the power supply units back into the shop. Now, you know, I only had to move them about 100 feet, maybe 150 feet to get them to put away, but I'm sitting here sweating. Um, remember, my goal is between 40 and 50 pounds. Generator, way over 50 pounds, well not way over, it's about 55 pounds, it's heavy. Do I use a cart? You betcha, but I gotta make sure I've got a cart that can handle the weight. What else do I have to worry about? Well that extension cord, you know that extension cord weighs about 20 pounds. Um, it doesn't sound like a lot. Start carrying this stuff or start trying to load it on dollies and move it. Uh, it, it'll wear you out. And plus, I had to bring out battery stuff. Yeah, so that's what I want to talk about now. I can't make noise where I'm at for whatever reason, right? All right, I can't get commercial power. What are my other choices? Well, I'm going to run off battery. Now everybody says, oh, solar. Well, yeah, I'm going to show you solar as well. You better believe it. However, um, understand that solar is just charging the battery you don't run directly off solar you have to have a battery as let's just call it a storage device uh, my club tends to call batteries that are hooked to solar units as giant capacitors storing our voltage so we don't dip down uh, although we do dip down and we'll talk about that too a little bit but 
Before we do that, let's take a look at a quick, easy little battery that I actually have that's under 50 pounds. It's the only battery that I have that is under 50 pounds, but I just want to talk about it briefly. I want to show you the benefits of it as well as a couple of the, oh, not so beneficial attributes of it. All right? So with that, let's change angles. Well, okay, this is my little ammo case battery. It's got a 35 amp hour battery in it. And basically it's a battery with a fuse block, some connectors, and a main breaker. And this little darling works great. It's really good for low power demand needs. Now the reason I say low power demand needs is it can deliver uh, a decent amount of amperage for a very short period of time but then it starts to fall off so let's say that I'm on uh, you know a hundred watt HF rig it it will go down below where I want it to go pretty quick but let's just real quick take a look at this thing set up alright well there you go pretty simple setup right we're just going down here plug directly into the battery Let's take a look now with this on, what kind of voltage we have on the front side. Well, okay, we're at about 12.1 volts. I'm going to switch over to... Uh, to a VHF here station. Let's go to something that... Uh, Oh, let's go to one of our simplex channels out here. We'll just pick 18, uh, which is uh, basically for more parks, a neighboring city. We, pr we won't reach anybody because we're on a dummy load. But right now I'm at only 10 watts. Let's see what happens to my voltage over here when I key. Oh, that's no good. See, that is below power rating. I've just unkeyed. And of course, it recovers. Okay, now that's a full 50. Uh, that's a full 10 watts. Let's go to 50 watts and see what happens. What happens when you lose power? When your power, you don't have enough power to power your radio. Let's go ahead and key it. Gets a little angry. And you know what? At 10.9, my power is pulling back. I can look over on the other side, and I can see I'm not even putting out barely. 40 watts, so that is a 20% loss in power. So how am I going to deal with that? Well, I can go with a bigger battery. That's one solution. Let's take a look at another solution and yet another piece of the go kit, right? Another electrical thing that we've got to haul around when we're running battery. Well, okay, so look at that. I'm at 13.7, 13.8 now. And if I key, I'm only going down to about 12.9. That's not too bad. That's within range. All right, AG6AG on a dummy load for ID. Thought I better do that. Anyway, and of course I unkey, I'm back up to 13.7. So, the reason it's, believe it or not, going to 12.9 uh, there is I have loss in the 14 gauge cable I have going between what I'm about to show you and the radio itself, the go kit. So let's move to that. Well, okay, there you go. This little unit here is designed for battery power distribution. And it basically is set up with a battery power booster or a voltage booster right here that boosts everything to 13.8 volts. I plug the battery into the board which goes into what I call raw power distribution in case I actually want to pull additional things out. From there it moves into the MFJ where it's distributed here on this fuse block assembly. Over here, this fuse box assembly right here is for unamplified circuits. That's why I need to charge something or something along that line, and I want it fused. Excellent source for that, okay? So this little box here is in one of my standard boxes, 
and it also shows me here I've got uh, a little voltmeter right there that's actually showing me the voltage of the God I don't know if I'm getting this the way the Sun is here Let me back up a little uh, hope you can see it it's 12.1 volts right now anyway and this little battery will last oh maybe uh, it's 35 amp hours I can do the math reasonably quick as it sits it can't really last a long time but it is usable anyway with that what do you do past this well how about going to a bigger battery that's what we needed more power so let me show you how I hook this up and uh, we're also going to do solar to this so I'll get a chance to show you all the solar stuff now, now this is what I'm talking about this will get me through all sorts of issues as far as time. I could actually run a station like uh, the one that I'm showing right there for a good, oh, you know, I could even go 12 to 16 hours without recharge on it if I needed to. Now, that's not based on 100% utilization. It's not based on putting out 50 watts. But it is based on the ability of normal runtime for a uh, net control or uh, especially a rest stop or something that's remote to be able to operate. Okay? With all that though, we have an issue. I've got the battery over here and I've got my go kit way over there. Oh dear. How am I going to manage that? Well, this happens to be a real issue. A lot of times you are going to uh, be in a building with this equipment having to power off battery because for whatever reason you're at a show or something like that and they aren't going to allow you to uh, uh, have an electrical outlet or run a generator obviously inside or outside. So you need to be creative and figure out how you're going to position a battery in a solar system in order to power your radio. So I came up with this solution. This is yet another box. By the way, uh, these boxes obey the 40 to 50 pound rule. Um, the battery does not. That's a 65 pound battery. Uh, and yes, I don't like moving it, and yes, I'd much rather deploy the generator because it's easier and requires less stuff. But, if this is all you got, this is all you got. So, what we're going to do is we're going to grab one of these big old extension cables. These are 4 aught jumper cable extension cables. And I believe they are approximately 10 feet. I'm going to unplug this in. Come on. There we go. There we are. All right. Now that I've got that all set up, let's take a wide shot of that, and then we'll go over and look at it. So what do we accomplish with all that giant cable? Well, we accomplish a lack of voltage loss. We don't have almost any voltage loss. Maybe at a 50 amp or a 50 watt draw, 100 watt draw, it might be oh, 0.5 maybe uh, over that entire distance. And when you're worried about getting the power to the radio, that's what you got to worry about. Let me get in a little closer to take a look at the other stuff over there on the table. All right, well, we're no longer using the small battery any longer. I'm going to go ahead and reset the paper on it. Stow it for now. This battery sure is easier to haul around than the big one. It just doesn't have the kind of power I need to run this kind of equipment, but it's but it's awesome to have for a smaller distribution. Um, basically, this terminates directly into here. Into here goes through the power booster, goes into our radio. i uh, got a little bit of a, a weak cable there that I should uh, replace, but uh, for our demo, I think it's good enough. Let's go ahead and take a look at the front of the radio. All right, so here we are again at the front of the radio. 
I'm going to kind of slip in here. And uh, you notice we're right at 13.8 here. I'm going to key up. Let's see where we end up. Ah, 13.0. And we're getting full output. So that's pretty good. Um, actually, that's really good. I'm really happy with that. Anyway, all right. So how long can we run off this battery? How long can we run off the battery? Well, there's a $64 question, right? Uh, we base everything on how much time we have to actually operate. And it isn't always conclusive. I know for a fact that just at idle, the big go kit, which is actually the event go kit, which isn't set up for contests or all sorts of other crazy stuff, does better when all it's doing is listening. There's requires less power to power both the radios in this as it does to power the 991. Nothing wrong with that, nothing bad about the 991. It was never designed really to be a low power radio, right? And we probably, you and me both, probably have bigger radios that draw more power that you would never consider unless it was an extreme emergency to ever try to run them off 12 volts. That said, we all never know. So, how can I stretch this battery out farther? Well, the answer to that is charge the battery. Well, how do I do that without commercial power? Duh! Right? Solar! Ah, but yet more stuff to bring! So now we have all the battery stuff, the cable extensions, we've got the battery power delivery system that we have that's hooked up to the radio itself to ensure that it gets its 13.8 volts from that 12 volt uh, deep cycle battery, right? What's next? Well, we got to get a solar, uh, some solar panels on that. That means we need a solar controller, we need all sorts of additional systems. Let's take a glance at that next. Well, there we go. Some more stuff. Let me point it out to you. So, what we basically have is we have our solar controller box right here. And this box houses the controllers, all the cables that are necessary for us to utilize our solar system. Over here, this is a single 100 watt panel. This panel is one of several I own, but uh, this controller really only holds 200 watts or handles 200 watts. I, on, a, on a day where there's not a lot of sun, I can deploy more in, ser or in parallel and maybe squeeze a little bit more out of it, uh, but I definitely don't want to overload that controller. Let's take a kind of a glance more inside that box. So this has all the stuff I need to deploy my solar uh, charging system. The controller is built into it. I have uh, cables that will lengthen the distance between the solar panels and this controller if I really need to stretch this out at distance because of where I'm having to operate. Um, you know, bear in mind, I'm going to change my angle here just a little bit to get the shot of that big old battery cable there. I do have another one of those. I can actually double my distance if necessary. The goal is to not have to do that. If this gets me around a corner outside a door and I can deploy my solar there, it's not making any noise, typically organizers or um, you know neighbors, people like that, won't complain. Um, the solar panel itself uh, these actually are really neat. They are also under 40 pounds. I can carry one in each hand if I have two of them. This folds up and goes into a nice little suitcase type wrapping. So, hey, is it difficult to deploy? No. Was it a lot of work to set everything up to deploy it? Yes. Um, is it carrying more stuff? You better believe it. I've got two of these things, right? I got this solar controller. Now, also, since I'm running off battery, I've got batteries. This is one of two batteries, folks. If I need to be able to run both radios for an extended period of time and it's a cloudy day, I've got two uh, batteries we deploy in parallel to make it all work. Uh, 
needless to say, we've got all the battery cabling that we got to pack and carry. Also, take a look. I've got to, you know, do some sort of battery distribution system over there on the radio in order to keep the voltage up where I need it. We haven't even talked about tables and chairs and an easy up because I wish I had one right now. It's hot out here. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff to go with all this stuff. Now, if you're concerned that you don't know how you're going to power, if you're being deployed and you're not getting any information, well, what do you do? Let's talk about that. Well, so I think we covered it. Easiest commercial power. Next to easiest generator, if you can use one. A little more difficult. A battery, a small battery, but you may need more uh, power. Add some more difficulty and some more stuff to carry, too, with all these things. Uh, solar with a big battery. There's a lot of stuff to move. And really, what are you getting away without taking at that point? Okay? And how do you deal with the option of not knowing how you're going to power? So, a little word of experience. Um, you know, if you are going out and your responsibility is going to be, uh, or I don't know, working communications in an evacuation center, or relaying information from a hilltop, those sort of things, uh, you want to load for bear. You want to bring as much to the party as you possibly can. Now that doesn't mean bring everything. I mean, because let's be honest, we haven't even gotten into antenna systems yet. And that's a whole nother bag of tricks and that's going to be the next video. But if I didn't know where I was going to be stationed or what the power situation was going to be there, uh, I would probably gear for commercial power if it was an evacuation center, because typically evacuation centers have electricity. However, I would also be prepared to be on battery power, because after all, the evacuation center could turn into an evacuated area pretty fast in a forest fire. Okay, so you also have to look at those things. So I would probably bring some method of being able to provide battery power for a certain period of time at that location. Um, if I was going up to a hilltop, you know what, that's an obvious one. Uh, I'll bring in a generator, but if it doesn't look safe to run the generator, and by safe, I mean if I'm on a hilltop covered with brush, I don't want to run that generator and add to a forest fire or something that is the reason that I'm on the top of that hill, right? Uh, a lot of this is just common sense, but it's, it, it's something that you need to pre-think before you go up there. Be prepared, you know, that's all I can say. Uh, I almost always will bring some sort of a battery setup with me regardless if I have commercial power or not and it may just be that little battery and it may just be a battery to hold me up long enough to be able to monitor while we're figuring out why we don't have electricity okay but I always bring something and if I feel that I'm going into an environment where I'll need to transmit a lot and I may not have power reliably I'll consider the generator and the solar and the batteries and everything else. Uh, somebody made a comment in the first video, said, man, overkill. Well, yeah, a little. Sure it is. Of course it's overkill. I mean, you know, if as communicators we are unable to communicate, we are unable to do our jobs because we can't power our radio, well, my friend, we failed. There's no such thing as overkill. There's not having enough. And I don't want to live that environment. Anyway, with that, hey, thanks for joining me. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. This is AG6 AG Stu saying 73. Wow, a whole lot of information there. And I hope that you got enough out of it that you get an understanding of what you really need to think about when you're putting together a go kit. 
One thing you'll notice about my GoKit designs and the way I design these modules is these modules are supposed to act as a usable system in multiple environments, such as the power distribution system that has the power boost box in it. Um, notice that there are a lot of places that somebody can hook up to that battery. That comes in very handy when you're working in an evacuation center or you're working in an event, uh, because let's face it, everybody needs power. Um, some stuff I didn't show. I didn't show a uh, inverter that I have that I can use to power directly from the battery. I can power 120 volt devices. Um, that comes in very handy if I need to charge a bunch of HT batteries or something like that. Again, there's going to be many times that you don't know how long you're going to be deployed for. You don't know what your power's requirements are going to be. And, you know, that's what this video is all about. And the concept of having modular boxes that you can grab that are easily identified in, uh, uh, in your uh, uh, storage area, that's, in my mind, very important. And I wanted to show you one additional thing over here. What we're looking at is we're looking at the bare amount of stuff that I need to load and get out on site uh, if I'm going to run battery and solar. Now, if I'm going to run for a while or I'm going to be running a lot of equipment, that changes too because then there's two batteries and a second solar panel. Um, also, bear in mind, I have no commercial power or 120-volt power supply stuff in this little assortment of stuff. That is more equipment. And if I bring an extension cord, that's more equipment. So... Being able to plan for these things is really helpful, but sometimes you don't have that opportunity. Anyway, hey, I want to thank you if you made it this far into the video. Um, and uh, the next video is going to be on antennas. So that should be fairly interesting because we get to talk about um, coming up with antenna solutions that are easy to deploy and Picking the right antenna solution based on the amount of time you'll be on station. So that's up next. Hey, if you think of it and you haven't done it already, please subscribe and you can click the little bell and get notifications when we have new videos. Um, any comments or questions, make them down below. I really appreciate the questions uh, and uh, I try to answer all questions within a couple of days. With that, I'm Stu, AG6AG. And I hope to hear you on the air.